Good morning. Thanks for joining us again on another Foodie Live. If this is your first time watching us, we'd like to welcome you and let you know you're in for a fun 30 minutes of chef interaction, product knowledge, and recipe creation all surrounding brunch. If you're having any kind of technical issue throughout the session today, take a moment, refresh your screen, and that's going to fix your problems. So for those of you who don't know me, my name is Kanan Saunders from the Cisco marketing team. I'm one of many. And today we're focusing on brunch for the upcoming Easter and Mother's Day holidays. So if you're looking for inspiration, you're in the right place. Chef Neil Doherty is coming to us from the Pacific Northwest region in Portland with our chefs, ready to show you their creative spin on brunch. Keep in mind, everything shown today is available through our online ordering platform, shop.cisco.com. You don't need an account to browse and also the products are available through SuppliesOnTheFly.com. If you're viewing our program today through our Cisco events platform, you have a couple options, so I'm going to run through them really quick so you know what they are. And if you're watching us through our YouTube live stream, then uh, we encourage you to reach out to your sales consultant so that way you can get the materials that we're talking about this morning. On the left-hand side on our Cisco events platform, you have a link to the Spring Into Flavor. It has St. Patrick's Day seafood and recipe inspiration for spring. On the right hand side, you're going to see a link so that way you can schedule your virtual consultation with our business resource team. And we're going to talk a little bit more about that so you have a better understanding of what's available to you as a Cisco customer. On the top left, you have a link to our chef recipes from today. On the top right, you have a link to Cisco Shop where you can purchase the items that we're talking about. Also feel free to reference the recipe guide if you can't find those items or speak to your sales consultant. At the end of today, we have a quick Q&A session with one of our business resource consultants, Charlene Rojas, about today's content and how you can implement those ideas into your business. All right, so at this point, let's go ahead and kick off our Foodie Live. Brunch is a staple of American dining and we're gonna help you get ready. Thank you for joining another Cisco Foodie Live. Today we're live from our Pacific Northwest region inside our Cisco Culinary Center in Portland. I'm Chef Neil Doherty, and today we're going to bring you chef-inspired menu concepts surrounding brunch for the upcoming Mother's Day and Easter holidays. I'll be joined by our talented Cisco chefs, Chef Jeffrey Cox, Chef Corey Schreiber, Chef Christian Kearns, and Chef Say Richmond to demonstrate these profit generating ideas. As our customers prepare for some of the biggest restaurant holidays, we want to ensure they know about a valuable resource available through our business resource team. The business resource consultants host a unique virtual experience in order to create a profitable and supportive partnership between you and Cisco. They partner with you to review your business goals, assist you with increasing your traffic, and help create new and exciting profit-generating opportunities. Schedule your virtual consultation by speaking to your sales consultant or visiting foodie.cisco.com. So let's get started with our culinary showcase. I'm going to welcome Chef Jeffrey Cox. Hey, Chef. How are you? Elbow to elbow, buddy. <laughs> So, I'm looking at this beautiful pork loin. Oh. So, talk to me about it. Well, you know, I've been excited about this for a couple of days. I've been texting everybody. This is an underutilized protein right now. With protein prices being what they are, pork loin gives us an opportunity to really maximize some profits and use it across your menu in many different segments. Here, we've just brined and roasted this um, uh, bone-in pork loin in maple syrup and juniper. And then we've also done it boneless here. It has a lot of different uses across the menu, whether it's a chop, as we've been indicated here, thinly sliced on a sandwich or on a charcuterie board. So really, this, go, this brings me back a few years to the old brunches when hotels and country clubs did these amazing, massive buffets, which is really cost prohibitive. And with COVID nowadays, it's not on, it, right? right? Yeah, exactly. But this reminds me of the old Kessler smoked rib. Exactly. You know what? Or Canadian bacon. You know, and, and, and what I love about it um, is the texture is so soft and subtle and delicious, um, but it's multiple uses is really what is got me excited. So over here, you've done a really, really creative play on a 
Bloody Mary board. So we know that a Bloody Mary gets a giant skewer and ice and vodka. And I got, Chef, I'm going to make you a quick Bloody Mary here using our Cisco tomato sauce. Cheers. So talk to me about this board. All right. So, you know, everything on a Bloody Mary board is really just what's in a Bloody Mary. And what I've, what I've done is I've taken the, the rib portion off of this and I've seared it and put it on here. We've got all the condiments spread across. This is a perfect board. And what's great about it, it utilizes what you should already have in your menu or already on your line. One of the things that I love about this board is this cheese curd. Instead of a flavored cheese, I just took um, a, Aleppo pepper and dusted this cheese curd. Now, a lot of folks have cheese curds on their menu. They use them um, for deep fried. So how else can we use them? This is a great way to customize it and make that cheese curd your cheese curd. So you've got, you've got Sicilian olives. I've got Sicilian olives, and I pan roasted those with a little bit of pickled garlic just to give it a little different uh, flavor and, and texture. I grilled the artichoke hearts again just to give it a little, a, a little different look. A couple slices of sausage. I long sliced the salami just because it, it looks fun and it's different and unique. And it just it's a little bit of everything. A perfect board for five or six. I love the little Tabascos on there as well. Here's yours, Chef, by the way. Oh, thank you yours. very much. <laughs> and, and so does this also come with skewers so that everybody can build their own? Absolutely. Or it Absolutely. So I, I put some examples here. And what I would suggest in, in serving this, I'd start it like this, but serve some skewers on the side so people can make their own as they go or just small plates and just so that's it. just totally eleva elevating the charcuterie board and bringing it to a whole new level and then on this side well so i just took our um our lasagna sheets regatta cheese mozzarella and i just made a little terrine out of it roasted it so it's it's a just a, a cheese lasagna and then i just kind of deconstructed it i put the tomato sauce on the outside instead of inside and then put all the uh, accoutrement and flavoring um with that would go in the lasagna on the side. So you really got to customize it and make your own dish. And it's just super fun. So this is a shareable platter. And here you got the prosciutto. Yes, prosciutto. You got, you got the, uh, the Castilian uh, the, the pan olives. Roasted, uh, that uh, you pan roasted, yes, right? Pan to give them a little bit. Yep. And then you've got this beautiful artichokes. You got over here the green beans. Yep, green beans. And, and, with and, garlic and, and tomato. With, actually with our sun-dried tomato pesto. Beautiful, oh, yeah, so yeah, great, great use. Pesto, yep. And then you've got these beautiful, like technically handmade crackers. So what do you do here? So what you do is you just slice those about 16th uh, of an inch thick, put a little olive oil on both sides, put them between two sheet pans, 425 degrees for about seven to eight minutes until they get toasted and brown, pull them out, and they're good for four to five days. So really what we're doing here is we're technically taking one of these one of these together, right? Yep, yep. And then we're gonna plate this individually and then take some yep. more items like a crudité style, right? Yeah, look at that. You know, just, and, and then you just enjoy. <laughs> I mean, that is unique. That is the first time I've seen a lasagna board. And let me tell you something, I'm really gonna try that one myself. <laughs> so we're talking about a great loin. We're talking about doing a great Kessler rib kind of Bloody yep. Mary board. We've gone into the lasagna board. And then now we're going to start talking about some things that I'm really hot and heavy about. I'm going to bring one over here and show everybody is items that are handy for to go or for eating street food exactly. or food carts. Yeah, food carts, handhelds, really, really easy. Um, uh, we're using our seven inch dough pie round. So it's, right. so it's, it's pull it out of the freezer, slack it out. Um, I put a little bit of whipped ricotta with lemon and fresh berries and baked it uh, as an open rustic tart. You can close it and make it um, a handheld berry pie. This one has more of our uh, smoked ham loin and some smoked gouda cheese, which is also on this board. Um, so it's kind of, it's, so if you really were thinking about it, you're taking something like what in some countries there's calzone, in some places there's an empanada, empanada, a pasty. Exactly. There's so many different names for it. And this is a very, very classical French uh, kind of thing. Yeah, you know, and, and, and Chef says is, 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 our, is our bakery gal, but I just call this a rustic tart because, look, it takes about 30 seconds to make one of those. It's the easiest thing in the world, and it really should just use what you have on hand. So, I mean, so what we've done here is, and I think that's really what brunch was, right? If you think about it, it was the 
a way of utilizing your prep and your items throughout the yeah. week and then adding it as a breakfast and lunch component right. together. So let me tell you, these are really, really exciting. The Kessler rib is outstanding. This is very, very unique, and I love the fact that it's shareable and things are starting to open up again. Catering's coming back. Yep. This lasagna board is really blowing my mind. I mean, this is absolutely perfect with our Italian segment. Chef, thank you so much for the inspiration. It's been a pleasure. Yeah, man. And hope to see you again soon. All right, thanks, Chef. Appreciate thank you. it. So next up on our culinary showcase is Chef Corey Schreiber, actually who is a James Beard winner. So come on down, Corey. Hey, Chef. How are you, man? Great seeing you. So Good tell me about that James Beard Award real quick. That was a time when Oregon wasn't quite on the map yet, 1998, and I was working hard with the IACP, which is the International Associated Culinary Professionals, the Beard House. We were cooking there twice a year. Lo and behold, they put that medal on my lap. Well, congratulations. So I see you brought some of those moments with you. So talk to me about what's going on over here with the egg. Well, with the egg, and this is something I've done with customers and trying to simplify the process of eggs. We say sous vide, people get nervous. This is the way to just bring the egg up to, I say, 151 degrees Fahrenheit, and it just gets set. And so, and then it's just in there and it's running. You can put this on the night before and come in and have all your eggs ready for a sandwich, you know, for a burger, whatever it is. So then the process, because this doesn't involve any vacuum sealing, nobody needs to be nervous about it. Those eggs are ready to go. They are all cooked exactly the same. So it's an example of the pork dish where I'm gonna put it on there, but I wanna make the point, it can go on almost anything. So while you're taking the shell off that beautiful egg, well, tell me about the pork chop. Well, the pork chop is one that we sell. It is a five ounce and it, the pocket is already cut into it. So it comes individually bagged. I took some sausage, a little bit of this roasted garlic that we have that's already done from Christopher Ranch, mushed that with a little bit of butter, a little bit of thyme, and just easily put it into the pocket, ready to go. All three of these dishes are geared toward pre-production. You and I know there's some classical background that we still adhere to. I very much so. These are classical dishes, but I really thought about how to get this in a dish ready to go in the oven with the cheese. So just basic tomato sauce. We have some of the Cisco brand over here. A Little bit of mozzarella on top. This can go into the fridge right here. Order comes in, goes in the oven, comes out. The question is, how do you finish it? Since we're talking about brunch, I wanted to show that egg. I'm feeling a little bit bold today. Oh. And I, I just because I love this process, this egg just comes right out and can just set right on top. And depend, and I want people to see that in the camera, how you know the yolk is just set, just set. And that shouldn't be weird for anybody if you want to break it up, but you can see that there. So you could go with that on a sandwich or whatever it is, but that just gives a little bit of brunch touch. So, so technically we've got a dish here that could be done in a wood-fired oven all day long. We oh. have this in a, in a, right, a cast iron skillet with the tomato sauce, the pork, uh, pork stuff with the Italian sausage. It's all ready to go. You bang it in, take it out, have the egg ready on the side. Yep. And that's a fantastic, for an Italian-style restaurant, brunch item that most Italian restaurants don't do. Well, I know you're teasing me because you knew my <laughs> restaurant was called Wildwood and I had two brick ovens in it and I'm really attracted <laughs> to the fire, so yes. This dish in the wood-fired oven. Absolutely gorgeous. No question. no question. And yeah, ready to go. And hopefully we know with pork, it's fine to cook it medium, medium well. We know the butter and the sausage is in there, so we have a little bit of a basting agent and, you know, should make everybody happy. Well, so let me step over there for a second and I'm going to take a nice little piece of this. I love Italian sausage, by the way, and I know that this is the Greco Italian sausage, oh, right? Oh, yes, yes. This is the Greco Italian sausage. So it's got, we know it's an 80-20 mix. We know it's got that nice fennel seed, the anise seed in it. Uh, it's very aromatic. Oh. I was so excited about the fennel seed and the aniseed, I fused a little bit into the tomato, tomato sauce also. But again, trying to make a dish that looks elegant, but really is not time consuming. Pork comes already ready to stuff. You can do any kind of stuffing you want. Tomato sauce is done. Simple little beets or you know, bullet, or this is called bullseye, kind of beet greens on top, ready to go and elegant. Excellent. So good, good choice. That'd be a, a brunch where you're kind of pretty hungry, I would assume. <laughs> well, yeah, that, but that's the whole idea of brunch. You're getting both breakfast and lunch at one go, right? Yes, so, yes. yes. So talk to me about the next dish. Well, this is, a little, again, a deconstruction in a way. You know, we say shrimp and grits. That's a brunch dish. You know, it doesn't really need an egg. But I call this a double shrimp and grits because what I did is I doubled up on pork and also on the cornmeal. So I take this chicharron, you know, this is the pork skin, comes like this. You were so excited that you had to fry a little bit off uh, straight up. But I dry it out and then I grind it up uh, into the breading actually. So it is a little bit of rice flour. Uh, it is the chicharron ground up. And then it is a little bit of Bob's Red Mill. Again, a local company here in Oregon. Oh, the global company actually, but is based here in Oregon. Some of their polenta. So buttermilk soaked, 
breading, deep fry. Again, all one step. Even that pre-cooked Daly's bacon goes into the fryer later at the very end, it all comes out. And to give it a little bit of a twist on the double corn, uh, we got double pork, double corn. This is polenta that has a little bit of chipotle paste in it to give it a little bit of spice. Always could use a little bit of lemon. But again, a one-stop polenta, as you know, we keep it warm, all service long. Perfect. Ready to go. So this should be a one-step dish you know, one-step dish, but also hopefully exhibiting a little bit of elegance at the same time. So you've almost got the three little pigs going on over here with the shrimp, right? <laughs> I mean, I love it. I mean, that, that, that is kind of cool. But I love the idea of, instead of being uh, grits, that you're actually using polenta, which, to be quite honest with you, is technically the same thing. It is the same one's thing. yellow, one's white. Right. Yeah, so I mean... And certainly here in the Northwest, we lean more into the, the yellow uh, variation of it. So that's my go-to for breading, just because you can see we still exhibit some of the jalapeno. There's a little bit onion ring in there. Again, full dish. That's a full dish. And it's pretty spectacular looking. You've got every moment of crunch, textural uh, heat. And I love it. I, I mean, most people don't realize this. You really should add a layer of acid in your dishes. It works like a salt. So let me finalize on this one because this is a vegan delight. Well, and what's going on with plant-based food, I think is the big question. We've seen some extraordinary kind of meatless substitutes that are out there. What we see here in the Northwest, and you know, Chef, that some people just don't want that pure vegetable. You know, there's just, it's just there for the demand and for operators to be able to do that. This in itself, just quickly, could take the egg. We could transfer it over. But in the vegan context, I did use the, the, the uh, dairyless cheese. So the dairyless mozzarella is on there. It's melted. So just grilled, a little bit of color, a little bit of salt and pepper. It's ready to go. Just like this dish over here, that goes in the oven with the cheese. Simple vinaigrette that sits with great pungency over the course of a service. We got some of the Greek olives in there. We got roasted red peppers, orizio in there. We got a little bit of shallot, a little bit of sherry vinegar, a little olive oil, and then to give it kind of that bright, crisp, you know, a little bit of a radish on top and some chives. So it's light, it's colorful, but it could easily step over it here. <laughs> They could step over here and take an egg and doesn't have to be vegetarian or vegan. Well, I've done a lot of cauliflower dishes and let me tell you, I love the, uh, this dish because of the horseradish, uh, I'm not trying to say the radishes and the olives, the saltiness, the crunch, the little bit of heat from the radish. The sherry and the vinaigrette is always one of my favorite. I mean, that's totally classical Spanish. But let me tell you, beautiful dish, Chef. I mean, you've done some wonderful things for brunch. Well, and what I want to say about this and the common complaint is that people say, well, I only get two steaks out of the center cut of the cauliflower. I took the raw cauliflower, chopped it up really fine, and folded it back into the vinaigrette. So you get this textural variation between the little raw cauliflower pieces that macerate in the vinaigrette and the grilled cauliflower. So I know that, you know, this waste issue, we're all working toward this net zero use. You and right. I talked about where's that compost bin? You know, what do we do with it? That, that is one solution in terms of like, just put it back into, into the dish again. And I think it's totally appropriate. Plus it bulks it out in that price point. We know that everything else on here can have a little bit of a price point, the olives, the peppers and so on, but that cauliflower uh, can be used both cooked and raw. Excellent chef. Thank you so much for the inspiration. Uh, oh. I love what you've done here. It's uh, obviously staying with local as well yes. uh, and adding really great touches. And well, a happy Easter and happy Mother's Day to all Absolutely. Them. All right. Thank you very much, Chef. It's been Cheers. a pleasure. Yes, thank you. So next up is Chef Christian Kearns from Spokane. Welcome, Chef. Hey, thanks for having me, Chef. How are you doing? So I'm looking at these and they're, I mean, this is amazingly pretty and I'm seeing all the cool items you've got on the table around you. Yeah. And, and obviously we're still Knocking out brunch. So tell me about this dish. So, you know, really when I, when I thought about brunch, I was inspired kind of by our, our last uh, foodie that we did, uh, talking about fusion and, you know, really taking that fusion into the brunch side. So with our first dish, I kind of went Korean with that. So I did a kimchi fried rice uh, cake on the bottom, isology, rubbed uh, Korean barbecue spice on our terrace major, little poached egg, and then a gochujang hollandaise sauce over the top with a little bit of micro cilantro from Fresh Origins here. So, okay, let me, whew, lot going on lot here. Lot going on. So it's a kimchi rice cake. Yeah, kimchi fried rice cake. You've got a, a terrace major, which is what, like really tender, shoulder tender, right? Shoulder tender, come from that terrace, or from that uh, chuck complex there. Right, and then you've got, so you did that about medium rare, right? Yes. Perfect, and then you've got the poached egg, and then the gokuchan. Hollandaise Space. sauce. I love it. Now I'm gonna have to really take a little thing. Excuse me for reaching out here, guys. The eggs are absolutely perfect. Just say, so look at this. Oh. That along with the gokuchan, are you kidding me? This has got to be spectacular. Excuse me for a second, chef. I'm gonna take <laughs> this mask off. Absolutely.
Oh my God. I felt like Guy Fury there for a minute. <laughs> <laughs> that's better looking though. <laughs> Thank you. So that's spectacular. And so this is the, uh, is this the one over here, the Korean rub? Yeah, Korean barbecue rub from Spiceology. And this comes through? This is available on our Supplies on the Fly site. Uh, great local company for, for myself, uh, being based out of Spokane. So some great chefs over in Spokane put this together, but they have some fantastic blends and spices that are available on Spice. And I love the periodic table. Absolutely. That's, that's pretty flash. So I'm not going to even introduce this. I want you to introduce this because this is one of my favorite kind of kind of items. Yeah. So, uh, you know, for myself, uh, growing up in Southern California and then moving to Georgia, I wanted to kind of blend those flavors together with another fusion idea. So we've got a uh, Latin inspired chicken and waffles. So you've got an elote waffle so that uh, corn and jalapenos are, uh, and cotilla are all charred and inside the waffle there. And then you have a guajillo and achiote paste uh, brined uh, chicken thigh and then a little bit of ancho chili powder in the, uh, in the actual flour itself with a little bit of ancho chili powder syrup, uh, lime and cilantro crema, and then a jicama slaw over the top just for a little bit of freshness because you get so many rich aspects in there that you got to break it up a little bit. Well, I'm just kind of excited that it's something besides Tennessee hot, right? Because I right. mean, we absolutely went nuts on Tennessee hot there for a while. So we've got this really, I mean, I love the elote. Mm -hmm. It's totally still on trend. We're actually putting out a creamed elote coming out on, the, on Cutting Edge Solutions. Fantastic. Uh, and we're actually coming out with a waffle batter for chicken. That's awesome. That could have made my job a little Certainly easier. Made a hell of a lot easier, yeah. right? <laughs> but I do love the fact that you got the yikama for that crispness, that kind of radishy flavor. Yeah. And then, I mean, because you've got a lot of flavor going on here. Absolutely. I mean, that, this is a pretty exciting dish and it's kind of totally elevated the uh, chicken and waffle concept. Really, really love it. So what was the seasoning in here? Did you use one of these over here? So actually uh, in here, I used a little bit of uh, tahine, which is uh, classic. Yeah. And then some uh, McCormick ancho chili uh, spice. So uh, then, so the tahine would technically be like going to a Lucha Libre or something in Mexico because it comes with the uh, yicama and the, uh, the melons, right? Exactly. So and, and you can't have a lote without a little bit of tahine on there to finish. Tahining. <laughs> so, all right. So then, so we, you're going to polish it off with this amazing little uh, goblet what's going to be in here because so we're going to do a little bit a uh, little bit of a twist on a uh, champagne fizz or champagne cocktail so what i did was i made a, uh, a hot honey and lavender simple, simple syrup muddled with a little bit of mint and we're just going to shake that up and we're going to put that right in there and then on the rim of the glass you'll notice that i've garnished that with, with this right with this and this so we've got a little bit, again, from Spiceology, we've got some honey granules, and again, from Fresh Origins, some crystal mint, uh, which is a fantastic way just to redesign your, uh, your cocktails. We're gonna top that with a little bit of sparkling. And again, from Fresh Origins, just some fresh uh, lavender flowers just for a little bit of twist. Now, Fresh Origins is based around this area as well, isn't it? Absolutely, Chef. So you've really kind of really, really done a masterful job of incorporating, obviously, two local companies along with some great Cisco products. So, I mean, we're yes. really doing that whole local national play. I'm going to have to try this. Enjoy. Wow. I love the crystals. They really kind of make it bang. Mm -hmm. And uh, the lavender is excellent. I mean, Really, outside of Herb de Provence, lavender is not really overly used outside of teas and stuff like that. But in this right. kind of drink, it's wonderful. No, this and when I was looking at this or creating this drink, you know, it really made me think of Mother's Day and, and that Mother's Day brunch. And normally, I would start my brunch off with a cocktail and then move into some food. But everybody does it a little bit differently on the holidays, so. So I, I really do like the idea of starting it off with a cocktail. <laughs> Thank you very much, Chef. It's Absolutely. been a pleasure. Take Thanks care of yourself. Chef. Thank you. So. We're coming to our final chef, Chef Say Richmond. And I've got to say, she is the pastry goddess. Come on down, chef. <laughs> I thought I was the pastry gal. Isn't I know, like hey, 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 yeah. <laughs> Chef Jeff, right? What does he know, right? So you got some absolutely beautiful, and one of my favorite Fun things stuff. in food is color. Yep. And I love color because essentially it's a lot of brown items, but you've actually used right. the orchids and everything else to bring it forward. Well, we, we eat with our eyes before Absolutely. we even pick up the fork. So I wanted to have stuff that was really beautiful, very eye-catching, because that's what people want to eat. Absolutely, right? So tell me about this. This, 
So I'm a big fan of cross utilization, as you know, and I'm using the Greco Italian beef, which makes the most amazing Italian beef sandwich, but I wanted to put a French spin on it. So this is the French onion soup dip. So I've got a little bit of that Greco Italian beef, some block and bar barrel Swiss cheese, caramelized onions, and then a nice peppery blend of arugula and microgreens. And then on the side, this is the gravy that actually comes with the uh, Italian beef. And so you dip that, and it's like having a bowl of French onion soup, but on a sandwich. So you've actually elevated the French dip into <laughs> a, a magnificent sandwich. Yes. And you're right, I tried the uh, the Greco gravy from yes. the- uh, Isn't it great? Uh, yeah, it's, I'm not gonna call it a sauce. I'm gonna call it a gravy. <laughs> and it's absolutely fantastic, because you can yeah. taste thyme and oregano, and yeah. it's so beefy. Great flavors. And it's got a little bit of fat in there, so yeah. it kind of coats your mouth. So it's the perfect accompaniment to the sandwich. So you wanna give that a shot? I will. I'm, I'm actually going to just oh. take, go for the onions because you did okay. a great job of caramelizing these. And you were telling me a little earlier that sometimes you actually pop beef stock in I with do. the onions. No, just a little bit of beef base. Oh, OK. Just a tiny bit because, again, I'm going for that French onion soup flavor. I I like to have that little bit of savory in there. So kind of most people got it wrapped their heads around that Lipton uh, French oh, onion no, no, soup. No, no, Remember no, that? No, no, no. no. <laughs> but you know what I'm saying? Is yeah. that mentally you need that kind of beefiness to yes. it, and you've definitely yeah. got it there. That's well, gorgeous. Yeah, I love this sandwich. It's one of my favorites. Awesome. But let's talk about pastry, shall we? <laughs> um, so, do you have a pastry? Did you have a pastry chef in your restaurants? I actually was very fortunate to have. You're extremely lucky. Yes. A lot of the customers that I'm working with today, they don't have pastry no. chefs. And I'm very particular about my pastry, especially pastries from France. So this is the Le Coq series. So Le Coq comes from us through European imports, all butter pastry. And so we've got pain au chocolat, we've got the beautiful croissants, we've got these little mini pain au chocolat, and then we've got the beautiful cinnamon rolls. And what I like to do is I like to add my own touch. So I call this speed scratch, right? But for desserts. And the amazing thing about these all this stuff is pre-egg washed and pre-proofed. So all you have to do is thaw it out, put it in the oven, add your own touch, and you've got something that's absolutely beautiful. I have to do something real quick so that the, uh, our viewers out there can look yeah. at this. And this, that sound. This is actually so a beautiful. real croissant. This is not what we see a lot of the times in restaurants. So you're taking an item that comes to you already ready to go that has a crunchiness yep. to it and actually the layers of flake. Yep. But you've so really beautiful. kind of given them a little bling bling and jewelry just here. Little, just a little bit. So of course I use Valrona chocolate that also comes to us through European imports. But I love these sprinkles. These are the Mona Lisa sprinkles and they come in several flavors, whether it's dark chocolate, white chocolate or milk chocolate, and they're not crunchy. Right? So they have this really nice, smooth feel to them when you bite into them. And that's actually chocolate from Belgium that it they're is. made from, Absol right? Yep, absolutely. It's Calambo, it's right? It's Calambo chocolate. But, and you were 100% right, because usually when you see these kind of items, like decors, they're usually crunchy they're and- too hard. Yeah, yeah you yeah. can break a tooth on them. So, yeah. so that's not gonna happen here. So what did you use for the red? Because I really love the red here. So this is, um, again, I'm using something from European imports. This is a raspberry puree. It's a fresh raspberry puree from Pontivier. And then for this, I wanted to do a little bit of maple. So I'm using the barrel, whiskey barrel aged maple syrup in a very simple glaze. And again, I put the Mona Lisa sprinkles on top. So you've really just elevated uh, pastry to a level that's you, way past most places. And you don't need a pastry chef. I, uh, this is technically, for me, if I look at this and visualize <laughs> it, it's Four Seasons, it's Ritz Carlton. It, it's what it's brunches were in the old days. Yes. And, and this had technically just a decorating labor. There was no right. labor in right. actually baking it. That's fantastic. Yeah. So I love these. Excellent. All right, are you ready for the last one? Yes, this is this is the piece de resistance. <laughs> yeah, a very very nice accent on that. <laughs> so I I love crepes, right? right? But crepes totally bring the line down during a busy lunch rush. So I'm using a Cisco Imperial pre-made crepe. Look at those really beautiful crunchy edges on there. They really the company who makes this has absolutely nailed it. So I took those crepes and I layered them with a little bit of ricotta and mascarpone, a little bit of sugar and some fresh cherries. And literally this came together, I'm not kidding you, in 10 minutes. And it can be done in advance and, and it chilled. Can be done in advance, you hold it, 
And then you'd make this really beautiful slice like this. So I, I absolutely killed this. I called it a milfui, which to me is a thousand layers. <laughs> but can you say it in the real French accent? It's milfei. Milfei. Yeah, you have to have a long, na a little more nasal. <laughs> so I, I think, listen, really, and I'm glad that we left this to the end because really, you. if you really think about brunches, Yes, it's it's hot food it's and it's savory. combination savory, yeah. but really at the at, to any great breakfast, you have to have good have something sweet, good good pastry and finish with something delectable. Absolutely, I think you hit all of them. I mean, this is gorgeous and simplicity. It could have had any fillings whatsoever in here, and I'm glad that you, you proved to everybody mm -hmm. that you can buy an item that is already made and elevated beyond Absolutely. itself. Absolutely, and the nice thing is you can cross utilize this on the line for brunch, sweet and, and savory crepes. Right. And again, fill it with what you already have in the refrigerator and you have the perfect brunch item. Well, thank you very much, the pastry Absolutely. goddess. Thank you. Chef Say, that. a wonderful <laughs> job. Thank you so much, thank it's you, been Chef. brilliant. We appreciate you joining us today for another Foodie Live. We hope these menu ideas inspire you for the upcoming holidays and provide your concept with additional profit. I encourage you to explore our foodie website for more information and also our Spring Into Flavor section containing recipes, ideas, and resources. See you next time with more relevant chef-inspired cuisine and profit-generating ideas. From Cisco Foodie Live, cheers. Wow, that was awesome. A big thank you to our from the Pacific Northwest region from Portland, also to Chef Neil, thank you. Those were awesome. I hope everybody enjoyed the creative spin on brunch the same way that I did. Um, I know these are going to be some great ideas that could be implemented into um, to our business, right? So hopefully you guys all enjoyed that. As mentioned at the beginning, we have a Q&A session with Charlene Rojas. So thanks for joining us, Charlene. Really appreciate your time this morning. Uh, let's go ahead and get into some topics, some questions about today's content, so that way we can help our customers make these ideas come uh, come to life in their business. Absolutely. So, so Charlene, um, you've been part of the business resource team for a while now. Can you tell us a little bit about um, how your team helps our customers succeed? Yeah, absolutely. And thank you for having me, Kanan. Um, I've worked for Cisco for about five years. Cisco is amazing in the fact that it offers not just groceries, food items, to-go to go boxes, all of those things, but offers a variety of resources. Our whole team is made up of 10 industry professionals. We have all worked in the hospitality industry, so we understand what like your plight, what it's like when you walk into a restaurant, you're pulled in a million different directions. So what our team does, everything outside of culinary, you need some assistance with social media, digital presence, understanding your financials, setting up those systems and operations, some staff training. So you meet with us virtually, we are spread across the United States, and then we are able to help you for your specific plight or need. That's awesome. And I know that by having that virtual consultation allows you to spread out and use whatever expertise you have on the team um, across the US. So that's, that's pretty impactful. That's very cool. So knowing that you speak to a lot of customers uh, with a variety of different needs, what are your kind of like your top main topics that customers most request or, or that they need help with? Oh, forgive me, Keenan, it kind of like broke up a little bit. What was that you just asked me? I was, I was mentioning that I know that you speak with a lot of uh, different customers with a variety of different needs. So when you speak to them, what are some of the main topics that customers need most help with? Uh, okay, within this last, I would say year and a half, it's been three major topics. One of them is definitely social media, like taking advantage of having that presence, that digital presence. So it's, it can be as basic as what platform should we be on? And then it can get as specific as how do we post? What, what, how many times a week should we post? Understanding like building a brand for them and then helping promote that on social media, right? So that is a huge one. The second I would say would be, the labor shortage, that obviously is something that is a plight that is just across the board or across the United States. So there's no one solution fits all for the labor shortage, but I can definitely say that there are things that we can definitely offer and help with and tailor it specific to your restaurant's need. It could be something as simple as utilizing WorkStream, who is one of our systems 
Cisco Solutions partners, they what they have been able to do is cut that time from like sometimes as a restaurant manager, you are busy. You can't get to those applicants quick enough. And when you do, they've already been hired by somebody else. If you were to utilize Workstream, it kind of speaks to where these this generation is, which is their, their smartphone. They receive a text message quickly. You're able to be in your laptop or smartphone as well and then get them hired quickly. And then it could be uh, that third piece would definitely be a restaurant understanding their financials. They're so bogged down with just running the restaurant or even as a restaurant manager working in different positions that they are uh, either not aware of their P&L or they just have kind of like not had time to look at that. So that is like a big conversation that we're able to have with them and kind of like get them back to knowing their numbers, possibly streamlining the menu, possibly with uh, some price increase based on what their their food costs are. Got it. Yeah, no, I, I love that. I like the fact that you mentioned too also the work stream piece because we do have a lot of solutions partners that I know you you talk to our customers about depending on their need, right? So that that's something that's great. It's available and, and that's something yes. that can be discussed during the virtual consultation. That's really cool. Um, you know, there is something else that I wanted to discuss briefly. It has to do with social media. And, and we understand that sure. today's topic, we're talking about Easter and Mother's Day brunch, right? These ideas and how big those those holidays can really be in our industry. So how do you think or, or what kind of advice can you give to our customers on how they can promote themselves during these holidays? It don't don't let it intimidate you or scare you. It's really can be really quite simple. It would be something like obviously you might have a special brunch item for Mother's Day, for Lent, for Easter. So just start promoting that. You could use the story to do a poll, right? You could do something fun like, would you prefer, which I really did love, Chef, the uh, Bloody Mary charcuterie board. Or are you more of a pastry dessert person, right? So you can just kind of put that, make it interactive. I personally, being a mother myself, I love the idea of being able to part with some, partner with some local businesses and then throw out a contest there for mothers. Why does your mother deserve to like win a brunch on us or like a fun little package? And then definitely do not forget restaurant owners and managers, have your staff promote it. Talk about it. Train your ser servers during a pre-shift. Let's start talking about like the upcoming holidays. Just mention it, casually mention it to our customers. You know, don't be afraid to utilize them. They are your sales force in the restaurant to start kind of informing guests of like some fun upcoming things that are going on. All right. Yeah, that's awesome. I mean, we have so much video content too. So there's a lot that can be uh, grassroots to be able to show what's happening and really promote it. Um, it, it's another way also, as you mentioned, just to retain staff because we understand how difficult that can be. Yes, so yes. Charlene, um, do you have anything else you'd like to mention to our customers before we let them know how they can uh, schedule their virtual consultation? I would say, you know, sometimes our team, the business resource consultant team, we might not be on the forefront of your minds to utilize, but Cisco has such a vast amount of resources that are complementary to you as a Cisco partner. So talk to your sales consultant if you have any sort of issue or goals for this coming year that you would like to grow your business in a specific area, reach out to us. We are able to meet you where you're at. You don't have to drive to the Cisco site. You can be at home. It could be your day off. You want to talk for 30 minutes. You can meet with us virtually. Again, our whole job, it's, I, I love my job because basically I just get to help the industry that I love. So it could be from, again, social media, understanding your financials, setting up your staff to give like exceptional service. Just reach out to us because we are here for you. Awesome. Love it. All right, so Charlene, let them know how they can go ahead and schedule the virtual oh, consultation. Absolutely, absolutely. Twofold. Go to ciscofoodie.com. You can go under their resources. Again, I am one of many. We have culinary team. We have specialists that are in protein and produce and a myself business resource consultant. So you can go on that website or you could just talk to your sales consultant and then they can just basically set you up with us and we're able to meet with you. Perfect. Charlene, thanks a lot for your time. Really appreciate it. Um, thank also, thank you everybody who attended our Foodie Live. We appreciate your time. We hope to see you next time. For those of you who are familiar with our Cutting Edge Solutions line, we will be discussing that topic next. So those are exclusive items to you as Cisco customers. We hope to see you uh, next time and join us. Have a great day.